Bo Nix is the best quarterback this year out of the crop. I think Caleb will be better because of what he's dealing with, but I think Bo Nix is going to shut a lot of people up really fast. I mean, it's already inevitable. He's a starter for week one. Definitely. He's got a coach, I would say, who a well-established, very rich guy who's already won a Super Bowl, who kind of has this like back-against-the-wall chip on his shoulder right now. Yeah. Because that year last year was probably not fun. And is anything, I would say, nothing has a chance to age better faster than booting Russell out for $80 million and selecting this guy. And let's face it, leading up to the draft before he inevitably picked him, everyone was going, oh, Sean Payton wants Bo Nix. That's terrible. That's awful. You can't draft this guy that high. This is crazy. This is stupid. And it's like, no, I mean, this guy has a pretty good idea. He was one of the rare guys that was all in on Mahomes. Uh, he liked Drew Brees once upon a time when not everyone was lining at the door. You know, so I, I would say that you have an offensive coach is just a huge advantage and a guy that can develop quarterbacks and a guy who can call the plays. The, to me, my biggest thing is not offensive and defensive coaches. It's do you call the plays? Do you dictate 50% of the game? And obviously, as an offensive coach, not only are you calling the plays, you're controlling the quarterback then, essentially, and the pace of the game. You know, defense is much more physicality. There's stuff out of your control. Even great defense gets beat sometime. But as an offensive play caller, you can completely control the game. And beside that couple-year stretch, which was bad, when they, I think Rob Ryan was their defensive coordinator in New Orleans, and they were going 7-9 and nine, even though their offense was setting records, when they've had good defenses, they dominated. You know, they, they were consistent 10-12 to 12 win team in the NFL. That's what Sean Payton's record is when the defense is solid. So if their defense is solid, which it was the second half of last year, and clearly, I, I, I think removing Russell Wilson, and this is why I'm out on the Steelers, that that thing that you take in is more than just that missed third down throw. It's all this other stuff, which in fairness, I, I don't know how much Russell brings it. It's just there now. It's just part of the deal. Yeah. And I, I, you remove that, you get this young, hungry guy, you get this chip on the shoulder coach, the Raiders name and Gardner Minshew that they're not going to be any good. The Chargers is going to have some injury problems and, and their depth is going to be very questionable. Yeah. Is it, is it crazy to think Denver could finish second in this division? No. He clearly it, likes this team. They like their rookie class. They got some good wide receivers watching them play. I mean, I, I don't oh, think it's inconceivable hey, they go 9-8. and eight. Bo Nix played with Troy Franklin. Troy averaged 105 yards per game, 14 touchdowns. Shit, they played together in college. Like, think about this. He's 24. Drake May's 21. Offensive coach. I, I think between Mims, Cortland, Sutton, and Troy Franklin, they have a good tight end, two capable backs. I'm like... That's that's at least average to slightly above average. I mean, look at Dallas Cowboys. They're completely dependent on C.D. Lamb staying healthy or they're screwed. Yeah. So to, to me, I look at Denver and I'm like, every single year, it was Houston last year, there's a pop team. And I'm watching Bo Nix, and I've had a couple of texts with Sean Payton. I, it, it's, it, it's not lost on me that a former NFL quarterback uh, that I was talking to in the building at Fox several months ago said, just remember, Drake... Caleb and Jaden have defensive coaches. He goes, I don't care how talented they are. <laughs> he, and this, this guy came into the league years ago and had a defensive coach. He said, it matters. Like you're nervous. You don't, you, do, you know, he said a defensive coach. I mean, Mark Sanchez told me years and years ago, it's like, you know, the reality is an offensive coach. You, you talk at night. You text, you know, you're texting. Defensive coaches think differently. Their buddies are defensive coaches. Their favorite players or Belichick's favorite player is Lawrence Taylor. It's not Tom Brady. Yeah. So I think, um, I, I just think Denver's better. PFF has their personnel near the bottom of the league. And I'm like, ah. Well, I think okay. Let's talk about this. I'm really excited. I'm probably going to be making a ton of Bo Nix videos over the next couple of days. Um, and... <clears throat> I've been thinking about this. I've been super high on Bo Nix, as you guys all know, from the jump. I've been talking about the Broncos, Bo Nix, Sean Payton, how that is really going to be a match made in heaven. But now, of course, the story is starting to grow and expand. We're seeing him play and all that. And I just want to address preseason first very quickly of what I saw. And then I want to talk about um, why I think Bo Nix has even greater potential than maybe I was even originally um, thinking. So... I'm a I'm 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 the first one to say it's preseason, it's preseason, it's preseason. No matter how good we see and no matter how bad we see, it's preseason. 
and I'm a fan of trying to lock in on a few things, really actually zoom in rather than zoom out. I think it's important when you're watching NFL games to kind of zoom out way more, and I try to do that in all the clips that I make, but for preseason, I think it's almost in a way kind of the opposite, that you you kind of want to lock in and really kind of put it under a microscope to kind of really see the little things. And people want to say, you know, it's preseason and maybe they're not playing against the starters or the second string, whatever it may be. And those are valid points, but that's why you kind of want to um, zoom in and say, what did Bo Nix do that you could take away that you could now say, it doesn't matter if he was playing against Hall of Famers, fourth stringers, players that are never going to be in the league. Like, what did he do? Which is why I say, throw out the box score. The box score doesn't mean anything because that's how those things can kind of get lost. But it was actually one play, one play that was called back when he um, went across a line of scrimmage and threw the ball. Um, you know, he was kind of scrambling um, and then threw a beautiful ball down the field for a touchdown, but it ended up, you know, not being a touchdown. And you're saying, well, hey, that play wasn't even official. Like, why? Who cares about that? Because it already shows his maturity, his confidence, and his ability to move around. Bo Nix was painted as a guy entering this league as someone who was essentially like, you know, like really small and could only throw the ball like two yards down the field. And it was just nothing but screen passes. And he couldn't really do anything. People kept saying he can't throw the ball down the field. He can't move. I mean, they, they literally painted him like he was just like, you know, a cartoon 12 year old, you know, trying to play with a bunch of men. And it was, and it just, it just never registered to me. It just never made sense to me. And that play proves it because when you are that small, when you are, and I don't mean small physically now, um, more like in the mind, when you are, when the moment is kind of too big for you, like there's a lot to be overwhelmed for Bo Nix in this moment, any rookie quarterback, there's a lot going on. And we've seen a lot of quarterbacks fail obviously over the years. And when you feel overwhelmed, when you feel like the game is moving faster than you can, you often do a couple things. One, you'll either panic and play beyond what you can do, or two, you just 100% lean on what you know you've always done your whole life, right? Which is why we see running quarterbacks, especially in the beginning of their careers, rely so heavy on running because they know that's their get out of jail free card they know that they can just rip off a run right and it's and it's beneficial for them because it can kind of help them you know gives them some time to get more comfortable in the nfl but it does delay their ability to kind of really become a great quarterback because you need to be able to throw you need to be able to do things around the pocket and you know get the ball down the field and not just run every chance you can and in bo nix's situation in that preseason game there was an opportunity for him just to kind of run. And I don't remember exactly now if he would have been able to run for the first down or if it was only going to be four or five, six yards, whatever it may be. I honestly, I, I, I don't remember. Um, but he could have ran for positive yards. And at the end of the day, when you're, when you're a rookie quarterback, like at least that's what you can hang your hat on, right? You know, no matter what happens, you can at least still look at that play and say, hey, I got four yards, right? I, I got positive yards, right? Like that's, it's definitely better than not. You know, I, I swear when you are when you are a new player on a new team, or just even a rookie in a new league, whatever it may be, at the end of the day, like, you're just trying to just at least do things positively, right? Like, because it's just, there's nothing worse than just doing anything remotely negative. Whether it's taking a sack, whether it's an interception, whether it's even just like an incompletion. Every incompletion for a rookie quarterback feels like a hundred. You know, it just, it just feels so heavy because you're trying to prove to your coaching, the players, the fans, your teammates. It's just, it's just a, a, a big burden, no matter who you are, whether you're Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Caleb Williams, Bo Nix, you just feel it. Whether it's in practice, it's just, it just can be so heavy. So the fact that he showed the confidence and the poise to keep his eyes down the field, to make a beautiful throw. And yes, he was one step too far, which is just, that's going to happen. It happens. You know, you don't have to lose sleep over that. But it was a beautiful ball. It showed such confidence and confidence and understanding and proved to me that he was not panicked, that the game isn't going too fast for him, that he is comfortable already in the NFL, which is the benefit of him being 24 years old or so. And his connection with Sean Payton, feeling comfortable to make those types of decisions as well. And I'm not going to act like that play was like a legendary play, right? Like I'd say it was, I don't want to say it was basic either, but it was just something that 
to see him be able to do that in a preseason game, because it also had nothing to do with whether you're playing against starters, Hall of Famers, or players that are on the practice squad. It's all about Bo Nix's approach, his confidence, his poise, his connection to not only his receivers, to his you know the offense as a whole, Sean Payton, and that's to me is so exciting. So at this point, like you know, I got the chills just going to say this, but it's like I feel like if you're a Denver Broncos fan. What you can take away from the, a preseason game is like, I think we got our quarterback for the next 10 years. Like, th- like this is our quarterback. This is, this is our guy that we're going to play. Again, what his career ends up shaping up to be, I have zero idea, truly, right? No one knows. I don't care what anyone says. No one knows. But I just don't think Bo Nix is going to be the quarterback where in a couple years, people are going to be like, oh, I don't know. Should the Broncos look to draft another quarterback or is it just not working with Bo Nix? You know, do they need to kind of move on? You know, so-and-so is available, you know, should they, you know, pull the number on, you know, I'm trying to think of a quarterback who's, you know, Tua, maybe Tua is up for a new contract. And like, should the, should the Denver Broncos look to get Tua? You know, like he's only 28 years old and still has a lot of light, you know, like, I don't think that'll be the case. I think it'll be like, nope, they got Bo Nix. They're happy. They're comfortable. Let's go. The rest is going to be building around him, uh, both offensively and defensively for that matter. And I think that's really, really, really exciting. In a way, that's what they were th- thought they were getting with Russell Wilson. They were just kind of t- trying to take that shortcut. We got an established quarterback. Let's go. Russell Wilson proved to not be that quarterback. And and Sean Payne pulled the plug immediately. It was like, we're not messing around with this anymore. Let's go. And it's just so fascinating. And so now to kind of bring it back more directly to what Colin was saying about Bo Nix is the best quarterback in this rookie class. I'm not in the business of trying to predict that personally. That's just not me. Um, I, I, I am definitely like a wait and see type of person. And my idea of making these videos and, and building this channel is not for you to come here. And I'm just going to give you these predictions months in advance, right? Like I'm much more... Uh, I enjoy much more like post game analysis rather than pre game analysis, which which is what I used to say a lot during last season, but is not very relevant considering it's been off season all this time. And so I like to break down what I just saw rather than trying to predict what I think will happen. That's just me. I know a lot of people in media always want to be the first to say something, so they can always be like, "I was the first. Uh, everyone else said this, but I said this." You know that that's just not me personally. Um, but I will say this. Because I think Bo Nix, I think uh, Caleb Williams will be great. And I don't think we need to create a war between Bo Nix and Caleb Williams. We already have too many battles and wars between all these quarterbacks. I don't care for it personally. I know a lot of fans do, right? Every fan wants to believe that their quarterback is better than another quarterback and all that. Again, I, I just want to see all great quarterbacks in the NFL. I'm a fan of football as a whole. I try not to be biased or try to lock in on one team, one player. Um, so I just want to see as many great players and great quarterbacks as can because I want every game to be box office. And I'm sick of these games where you're just like, okay, great. We can skip this game because uh, they have no chance. Um, so I'm not going to try to create a whole battle between Bo Nix versus Caleb. Caleb's going to be a bust. Bo Nix is going to win two Super Bowls before Caleb wins one. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm not, <laughs> that's not me. But what I will say is this. So I do think Caleb Williams will be great. And I think he can have early success as well. But this is what I don't think I really thought to, I don't think I thought deeply enough until now. I believe Shane Waldron, and, I, and I've kind of said, listen, everyone needs to kind of tap the brakes on Shane because everyone kept saying, you know, Caleb and Shane Waldron is going to be amazing. Look what he did with Geno Smith. And I kept emphasizing it's a different skill set to make Geno Smith relevant versus maximizing someone like the raw talent of Caleb Williams. Then, and, you know, Shane Waldron needs to kind of prove that. But here's the thing. I'm not under the impression that Shane Waldron, even if he proves to be a, a really great coordinator, that he's better a better offensive mind, and de- certainly not his experience, of course, as a Sean Payton. And I've been saying I think Sean Payton is a great coach, and he has been getting a lot of hate recently, a ton of hate. People actually really, really, really hate Sean Payton. And the truth is, is that Sean Payton is a great coach and a truly top coach, a, t- a true offensive coach in the NFL. Putting him with Bo Nix, if Bo Nix is even just proven to have the requisite talent to be a great quarterback. And now you link him up with Sean Payton, who's potentially a great coach or even an elite coach. That now can make Bo Nix truly that next level, truly great and elite. 
you know, truly having, you know, kind of like how um, Joe Burrow famously said, like, the Super Bowl window is my entire career. When you have a coach quarterback connection like that, and you have great and great, or great and elite, or elite and elite, you pretty much are always equating elite. Great plus, to me, if you have a great coach and an elite quarterback, that will nine out of 10 times lead to an elite situation. If you have an elite coach and a great quarterback, that nine out of 10 times will add to an elite. Obviously, if you have elite elite, then it's like, right, that's when you have Patrick Mahomes. Sorry, Broncos fans, but that's when you have Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. You're getting elite, 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 right? You're getting that consistency. So if Bo Nix can prove to be a great quarterback, or dare I say even an elite quarterback, that combination with Sean Payne will be the difference maker that can get him better than Caleb Williams and Shane Waldron. To me, that's been the problem with Josh Allen. I think Josh Allen is elite, but he hasn't even had great offensive coaches. Therefore, he's being held back. Just give him a great offensive coach, give him an elite offensive coach, and then boom, now you're having those fireworks. So that's the potential. You have the potential for Bo Nix and the Denver Broncos to actually get this connected, to finally be able to have the other side of the equation equal elite. And to me, that's incredibly exciting. How could you, how could, you know, how could you have anything but feel but you know excited for? So I think you know, the, the future can be insanely bright, insanely bright. Um, and I, I really can't wait. I, I really think that there's potential for this to just really, really pop. Um, and I've, I've, I've really thought, you know, cause when you make, when I made make, when I've made a lot of Bo Nix videos, just Denver Broncos videos in general, I've been definitely getting a lot of pushback, a lot of hate from people who are saying, no, 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 um, Bo Nix is not good, not good, not good. And we all know, uh, especially if you watch The Herd and stuff like that, Colin Coward, you probably watch First Things First, Nick Wright. Nick Wright is famously thinks Bo Nix is just an awful quarterback. And, you know, you start to say, like, well, am I just talking myself into this? Is Bo Nix really not that good? Because I I, I take everyone's opinions. I, I try to learn and grow and always try to reevaluate my own opinions. Um, And sometimes when you keep getting that pushback, I'm like, well, is maybe Bo Nix really not as good as I'm anticipating, you know, is he going to be a little bit more average, you know, blah, 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 blah. But the more I see, I'm like, this could be for real. He was not fancy. He's not cool. Like these other, like the other quarterbacks that got drafted, like, you know, like Caleb and Mahomes and Jaden. And, you know, he doesn't have that. Bo Nix is more of like a, an old score, old school, boring, all about business, no thrills, no frills, you know, quarterback. And so I think he can go under the radar in terms of the fireworks and 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 that he can kind of bring to the table. Um, so yeah, I don't know. This 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 just has some potential, and um, I I'm really excited. That's all I. That's my biggest takeaway. I'm just excited to see how this how his story unfolds. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think? Um, do you agree with Colin Cowherd that Bo Nix is the best? rookie quarterback including Caleb Williams in the NFL right now let me know in the comments below I read every single comment so whether you agree with me or disagree with me either way let's get in some discussions let's get in some fights but ultimately let's just have some fun and please do consider subscribing we are building an amazing community here and I would absolutely love to see you part of it I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much and see you next time.